So there's a lot of pictures around. So a lot of pictures of the time actually I was here at the clubs. Do you guys actually take notice of it? Do you see it? Of course you bring bring the photos up because you've got photos of yourself <laughs> up here. But uh... I may have. The chef's still there. He still serves my dish, doesn't he? He does, Howard. They call it the Schwarzer. I don't know what it I can't remember what it was, some pasta and It's a penna pasta, yeah, yeah, with asparagus and tomato sauce and everything else. Yeah. Yeah, they're very proud of that dish and um, as you said, you should be getting royalties off that. <laughs> What's it like living in Middlesbrough? How's it been? Love it, yeah. Honestly, um, settled in really well here in Middlesbrough. Very happy to be here, very happy with the club, you know, the fans and um, the whole town and, and the vibe is, is right behind the you know, one team, the, the borough, so it's, it's awesome. How is the confidence and do you still believe you can get into that playoff position? I think we're in, we're still in a good position, a, a position where we, we can make it, it's a possible position, so our confidence is, is there where it needs to be and we've shown the team's shown throughout the season. Also, when I've come here, I can see that what we're capable of and the squad we have. So there's every chance and we're going to give it our all to, to, to hopefully make the playoffs and, and onwards. Was also Chris Wilder a big reason why you signed for the club? Definitely, definitely. The, the calibre of a manager that, that he is and what he's done um, at previous clubs before, I think after meeting with him and, and seeing what the project was and, and, and seeing how he how he handles and runs, it was, uh, it was another big tick in my book to, to come here and it made the decision a whole lot easier. Can you give us an insight on what he's like day to day to work with? He's intense, he demands a lot from players which is, which is what I personally need and what a club needs I think and um, you know what you're going to get from him and he expects the same from, from his players. There was quite a bit of media attention and certainly response from Celtic fans when you decided to sign for Middlesbrough ahead of Celtic and being there as the manager. Um, and it all looked like you were going to go there, but then you decided on Middlesbrough. Can you can you let us in on why that decision was made? Yeah, of course. With all due respect to, to Celtic and, and Ange, um, my ambition is to play in the Premier League. And I feel like coming here with Middlesbrough, the position they're in and they were in, um, potential automatic promotion or promotion going into the playoffs and then being in the UK itself, um, I feel like it was the best opportunity to get to, to where I want to be in my end goal and, and what I want to achieve in my career. Do you get sick and tired of talking about the Scorpion goal that you scored? Not really, no, it is what it is and it's another thing that I look back on in my career with, with fond memories and, and in the time, time that I did it, you know, at Newcastle in the semi-final and we went through on, on to win the game and take us to the final, it was, uh, I love talking about it because it's good memories. Do you actually score normal goals or, or very often or is it just you like to go for the spectacular? I try to, I try to but I think Personally, whatever comes to me, it just it comes and sometimes they go in, sometimes they don't. But um, I just enjoy trying to score a goal in general, yeah. Talking about the national team, so you missed the last two, two World Cup qualifiers against Japan and Saudi Arabia. How difficult was that watching it from afar? Yeah, it was tough. It was tough. You want to be involved in, in those games as a footballer. They're what you call the big games and you know to see the results probably not go away um, wasn't great, but we're still there or thereabouts and we've got a right opportunity to put that right um, in the upcoming games. What's the confidence like? Did you speak to any of the boys after those games? We're definitely confident, you know, we Aussies, we don't, we don't give up, it's kind of never never say die and we've been there before. Everyone's right on board with the project and where we, where we need to do and what we need to do to, to get to the World Cup. For any young kid, any, any footballer who wants to leave Australia and come overseas, what would you give them as advice? I think you have to be resilient and, and, and be mentally strong. Speaking from, from past experiences, I come over by myself when I was 18 and I maybe look back on it sometimes and think I wish I'd stuck it out maybe and, and didn't come out alone but I also think I wouldn't change it for the world for what's happening where I am now. But um, I would definitely say be confident, be yourself and, and just be resilient because it's not going to be easy. Um, nothing comes easy in life and definitely not you know, coming from Australia. What's your ambition for your career? Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? I'd love to go to a World Cup for starters. Um, that's obviously a national team. That's the pinnacle of football is to, to represent your country at a World Cup. One, hopefully many more than one. But also, obviously, as I said before, to play in the Premier League, I personally think it's the best league in the world. Um, it's where a lot of Australians want to come and want to play. And I've dreamt of visit as a kid. And I'd love to go on and, and, and be able to represent Australia in the Premier League. Did you enjoy that? There's so much more, so why not hit subscribe and download the Optus Sport app.